All right, so I got some pretty major updates here for you guys on the ongoing protests and strikes over in Israel that are pushing back against some of Benjamin Netanyahu and his far-right government's plans to overhaul their judiciary and try to remove any semblance of checks and balances against some of the actions that his government would like to take. So, some details here from Axios. They give us a great breakdown. They say, BB suspends judicial overhaul after mass protests across Across Israel. So they say Israel, including its economy, has faced instability and unprecedented political and social unrest since the plan to weaken the country's Supreme Court was announced in January. Okay, so I got a couple different videos here that I just wanted to run through real quick on what some of these protests have looked like on the ground and showing you some of the scale of it, because obviously they've been at least somewhat marginally effective, at least in terms of pushing back the timeline on when this judicial overhaul would actually take place. So here's the first one that I got lined up here. Okay, so there you go. Just a little bit of, uh, you know, people dancing around and uh, throwing some protest chants out there against Benjamin Netanyahu's government. I also got this one just to show you again a little bit of the scale here. I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have taken to the streets. I've heard some estimates that, uh, you know, if you were to do a, a proportionate comparison to the United States, that this would be like the equivalent of millions, if not tens of millions of Americans taking to the streets all at the same time. So this has definitely been a widespread movement that has been taking place. Now, of course, I have to mention the deep irony that is at play here where you have all of these Israelis who are taking to the streets who are willing to go out and fight against some of these judicial reforms, which they see as a threat to so-called democracy within Israel. But then when it comes to the treatment or mistreatment and abuse of Palestinian people and their lack of democratic rights, it's nothing to be said about it, right? I mean, obviously, we've had decades and decades and decades of an ethnic cleansing and ongoing apartheid of of the Palestinian people, and yet we've never seen this sort of like mass mobilization of the Israeli people. It's just now that this kind of stuff, this creeping, you know, open fascism is starting to affect them. Now they're taking to the streets to protest it. So again, obviously not a fan of Benjamin Netanyahu or a whole host of the different ghouls that are within his coalition, including extremely far right, borderline straight up terrorists like ben, uh, uh, Itmar Ben Gavir. Okay. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you're, you're kind of protesting for democracy for me, but not for the entirety of the population that lives under Israeli control. Okay, so we continue here. They say, so what they're saying, quote, I am taking a time out in the legislation of the judicial reform, says Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay, so important to note that he's saying he's taking a time out. Doesn't mean that this is the end of the fight. Obviously, this means he's just slightly pushing back the timetable in terms of when he's going to try to push this through. And in the meantime, trying to consolidate power around himself in order to inevitably have the uh, you know consensus that he needs to push this through. But they continue saying, in order to prevent a rift in our people, I have decided to suspend the vote on the eight, on the second and third reading of the legislation in the current Knesset session in order to try to reach an understanding on the legislation during the next Knesset session. And they also say that Netanyahu has said that he wants to avoid a civil war. Okay, so that's the magnitude that Benjamin Netanyahu at least thinks that this is, avoiding a civil war by postponing this, and has warned that Israeli society is on a dangerous collision course. They say he also said that he is ready to start an immediate dialogue with the opposition in order to try to reach a broad consensus around the judicial overhaul plan, saying, quote, we will bring a reform that will restore the balance between the different branches of government while strengthening civil liberties. Okay, something that Israel is notoriously good at doing, okay, protecting and strengthening civil liberties. Okay, talk to any Palestinian living under Israeli, you know, occupation, and I think they, they would have a different perspective on that to say the least, but... They say the other side, so opposition leader Yair Lapid has said that he's ready to start a dialogue under the auspices of President Isaac, Isaac Herzog, and Lapid has said that his goal is to reach an agreement for a constitution in Israel. Now, keep in mind, Israel does not have a constitution like we have here in the United States, which is kind of why the, the situation with their, you know, Supreme Court is slightly different, right? I mean, obviously, as a leftist here in the United States, I think that we need serious, dramatic, you know, what changes to how our Supreme Court functions. I mean, right now, we essentially have a far-right dominated Supreme Court structure where most of the justices, including many of the liberal ones, are uh, essentially in the pocket of corporate America. 
America, and that's how they essentially govern. They're not doing some sort of like an independent and uh, neutral analysis of the Constitution or anything like that. They are making decisions on behalf of the people who help them to rise to those positions of power. So we have so many different critiques that I think you could level at the U.S. Supreme Court, but in Israel, it's a slightly different situation, and the Supreme Court in Israel is actually like one of the only things that is like barely standing in the way of some of these insanely far-right people like Benjamin Netanyahu and Itmar Ben Gavir from just completely, you know, moving forward with the expulsion of Palestinians, with the ongoing ethnic cleansing, and all of that stuff. So I think it's a different analysis, obviously, between our different countries. But they continue saying that Lapid has said that if Netanyahu tries any tricks, I'm not exactly sure what that means, he will find the people who protested in recent weeks standing against him again. But if Netanyahu is genuine, Lapid said, then there will be a serious dialogue. Okay, so skipping ahead here, they say that Netanyahu shocked Israel on Sunday when he fired Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, who a day earlier called for the legislation's suspension, saying that the plan created an internal rift that posed a clear and immediate threat for Israel's national security. Okay, so you might look at this and say like, wow, this guy's actually standing up against Benjamin Netanyahu and his agenda. But really, if you read between the lines here of what he's actually implying, he's basically saying we can't afford to have this kind of internal strife amongst Jewish Israeli citizens who are out in the streets and protesting this and causing this destabilization, because then that may open the door for Palestinian, you know, scary Palestinian terrorists to attack us or something like that. So he's kind of like giving a critique like slightly from the right a little bit on this, but they say that after Gallant was fired, spontaneous demonstrations erupted across the country and more than 100,000 Israeli protesters blocked Tel Aviv's main highway for hours on Sunday night, and thousands more demonstrated in front of Netanyahu's residence in Jerusalem and in other cities across the country. Protests continued into Monday, with about 100,000 people rallying against the government outside the Knesset. So they continue saying that in a rare move, the head of Israel's workers' union announced on Monday morning a general strike across the country until the legislation was suspended. Such a strike hadn't taken place in decades. Okay, I mean, it seems like at this point, every other country around the world is having all of these massive strikes take place. I mean, we've seen some in the UK, we've seen some in uh, France, we've seen some now in Israel and Greece and other countries around the world. But here in the United States, when we can't even scratch the surface of getting a cohesive labor movement together in order to try to pull off something like a general strike. It just seems like everybody else around the world is having fun with this kind of a thing. Collective worker power pushing up against the uh, you know institutional structures within their countries. We can't seem to figure that shit out here in the United States, but we continue down here, and this is where it gets a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, alarming and scary at a surface level. Because again, you're talking about people within, you know, this coalition that Benjamin Netanyahu has formed in order to keep himself in power. Uh, another part of this is that he's obviously, you know, facing some corruption probes, and that he doesn't want to be held accountable for his own corruption, and so he's trying to consolidate power in order to avoid that accountability. But he's also placing more power in the hands of some of the most deranged far-right freaks within his party, within his coalition. So. They say that Netanyahu also made a deal with far-right minister Itmar Ben-Gavir, who again, okay, just to be clear, is like, and I'm going to say borderline, but really it's not that borderline, a straight-up terrorist, okay? That's who we're talking about here, somebody who is full-throatedly in support of not only apartheid against the Palestinians, but a full-blown ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people, okay? This is a guy who has celebrated terrorists in the past, a guy who has aligned himself with terrorists. This guy, even according to the United States and Israeli government, uh, uh, opinions in this situation, okay, previously has been called a terrorist sympathizer. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. And they say that he is, who was also threatened to resign if the plan was suspended. And so as part of this deal, Ben Gavir agreed to give the government until the end of the next Knesset session at the end of July to pass judicial reform based on a broad consensus, the Jewish Power, Power Party said in a statement. But here's the key part. They say that Ben Gavir said in a separate statement that he and Netanyahu agreed that if no agreement is reached with the opposition during the Knesset recess, the coalition will pass the legislation unilaterally. Okay, great compromise plan that we have going on here where you're basically just opening the door for maybe some compromise, but if it doesn't really work out, we're still going to pull, you know, push for uh, full speed ahead in the same direction we were going anyways. But they say that senior members inside the Likud are pressing Netanyahu to cancel his decision to fire Gallant, and Netanyahu hasn't sent Gallant a formal letter, a formal letter firing him, which means the 48-hour process for the decision to come into effect has not started. And another portion of this is apparently 
apparently Itmar Ben Gavir is getting like his own militia within the National Security Forces, okay, which is the position that he's been put in charge of. He's essentially been in charge of uh, Israel's internal police force, okay? That's who Benjamin Netanyahu put in charge of the Israeli police. It's a guy who was essentially a far right terrorist sympathizer at the bare minimum, okay? And now he's making this sort of side deal with him behind the scenes to now give him even more power and even more discretion in terms of using his own militia to basically push back against these protesters, but also to crack down, of course, on the Palestinian people. So, I mean, that part of it is probably the most alarming by far. Now, we continue here with some other statements that I thought were interesting. So here from Biden, his, this is his response to this entire situation that's been unfolding. He says, like many strong supporters of Israel, I'm, I'm very concerned. I'm concerned that they get this straight. They cannot continue down this road. I've sort of made that clear. And he adds that he won't be inviting Netanyahu to the White House in the near term. Okay, so these types of protests, this kind of judicial reform that's happening in Israel right now, that's what's, that's what's concerning to Joe Biden. Okay, to Democrats, right, and Republicans. That's what's concerning, okay? Judicial reforms that may have an impact on the democratic rights of Jewish Israelis, okay? No concern when it comes to, you know, the bombing campaigns like Operation Guardian of the Walls in Gaza, where dozens and dozens of innocent children were massacred by the Israeli government. No concern for that or the fact that Gaza still remains to be the world's largest open air prison on the face of the planet. No regards for that. No concern for that. No concern for the Israeli security force raids that, for example, as a reminder, killed a well-known Palestinian-American journalist, Shireen Abu Akla, just a couple of months ago. No concern for that kind of a thing, assassinating journalists. No concern for the ongoing apartheid. No concern for the second-class or even third-class, fourth-class, fifth-class citizenship that, uh, you know, Palestinians within Israel get access to, or the treatment of Palestinians in the West Bank, or the ongoing expansion of set settlements within the West Bank territories. Okay, or the settler violence that is wielded by settlers who are backed by Israeli security forces. No concern for any of those things. Okay, but now we have concern when it comes to some of the judicial reforms that may affect Jewish Israeli citizens. I mean, again, it's just like a deep, deep hypocrisy for people who want to pretend to care about democracy while refusing to speak out against what is an ongoing apartheid. These are not synonyms, okay? Believe it or not, apartheid and democracy are mutually exclusive. You can't have both at the same time, okay? Radical statement there, radical opinion there. But we had a response to uh, Joe Biden's statement here from Itmar Ben Gavir himself. They say here from Youssef, powerful Israeli government minister who Netanyahu just gave a militia to tells Joe Biden to go fuck himself. Ben Gavir to Biden, Israel is no longer another star on the US flag. Okay, listen, fine, you wanna say that, how about we stop giving them $4 billion a year? How about we stop funding this country? How about we actually apply the massive diplomatic leverage that we have over them in order to stop not only these judicial reforms, but the ongoing apartheid and the ethnic cleansing, okay? We have essentially handed off massive portions of our foreign policy agenda, specifically within the Middle East, to Israel. Okay, this is not an acceptable situation. Same as it's not acceptable for us to have the close ties that we do with an authoritarian, theocratic, violent dictatorship like the one in Saudi Arabia. Okay, it's not okay for us to give weapons and aid and intelligence support to Saudi Arabia. It's not okay for us to give weapons and intelligence support and diplomatic cover to Israel in the same exact way. Okay, this is geopolitics from the United States in action here. The same country that wants to pretend to care about freedom and democracy and all of these core American values that are so precious to us, right? The same country that is doing that, that will scold countries like Cuba or Venezuela or, or North Korea or China or pick your poison, right? The same country that will scold those countries for perceived human rights abuses or lack of democratic values or freedoms and all of that turns around and is aggressively in support of countries like this, okay? And not only aggressively in support of them, but is 
actively funding and arming and aiding their atrocities. Okay, that's the situ situation that we have right now. So listen, in, in the short term, I'm glad that there are people who are marching in the streets to go protest the actions of this extremely far right, sort of openly fascist government of Benjamin Netanyahu and Itzmar Ben Gavir and the rest of these motherfuckers. I'm glad that people are out in the streets to protest that. But let's maybe think about expanding this to be a, a you know a protest or a movement that is actually all encompassing. Okay, because it's kind of hollow to go out and protest for democracy if you're only protesting for for democratic rights for a certain subgroup of people within a population. Okay, the answer here is to actually liberate the Palestinian people, to give equal rights across the board, to grant citizenship rights, to grant housing rights, okay, to make sure that Palestinians are given equal treatment under the law, okay, as they are being occupied by Israeli forces, okay, that is the actual solution that would bring about true sustainable democracy within Israel itself. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying.